Hello again, and thank you for tuning in to the second lecture of Onyx Financial Track, uh, or the first lecture actually, because today we will start talking about Onyx and the features that this program offers. Previously, it was just an introduction to ERP and what it stands for. Now, first things first, we will talk about how to log into Onyx system. You can log in by clicking on this icon that says ERP login. It will open a window where we can find basically the following details. First of all, the year. This refers to the financial year. And after that, we have the language where you can select basically the language preference or the display language of the system. You can choose between Arabic or English. Under that, the accounting unit. When you click on this arrow, we can select the accounting unit from the menu. Then we have the user. So in this field, we can write user code number. Under that, we have the branch where we can choose the branch that we're cu currently working with or working from and the company, of course, to choose the company that we're working with as well. The password. So in this field, we must write the user's password so we would be able to log in. And after that, the system. So from this selection menu, we can select the system that we need to work on. So um, after that, we click on OK so that it would log in. Once you log into Onyx, you can see the user's interface. Now, it consists of different options or buttons that clearly do different things, of course. In the middle, we have numbers. Now, those numbers are related to the company, the year, the branch, and the accounting unit. On the right side, you'll see a group of buttons. Now, those buttons act as tools that we can use to deal with the program. We'll go through them to know a little bit more about the functions of each of those buttons. First of all, we have the messages. When you click on this button, the messages screen will open or will appear so we can read or write messages. It's kind of an internal communication tool. After that, we have the favorite screen. When you click on this button, a window for favorite screen will open as we can see here. This is where you can select screens that you use frequently without having to go through the system's details. So if you use a screen a lot or it's basically one of the few screens that you're always working with, you can favorite that screen so that you would have easier access for it later on. Um, next to that we have execute program. This is used by technical support to set up the program so we will not really go into details about that one. Um, then we have refresh uh, the tree. So this command basically can be used to have the program rebuild the system tr the system's tree according to our choices in the setup or in the initial setup. Relogin. So when we click on that one, it opens a login window to log into the system again with a different user. It's the same as uh, it looks exactly the same as the initial login screen that we saw at first before we logged in. Now, expand tree and collapse tree, it's pretty much self-explanatory. It's to expand or collapse the system tree. About system, it opens a window that has more information about the system itself and that Onyx ERP is basically developed by Yemensoft. As for the related screens, this button opens a window that includes the favorites, again, where we can add a screen to our favorites for easier access later on, change password. So from here, we can change the user's password. Under that, we have the screen background where we can change themes or customize backgrounds. And the last thing is show items where we can show the items without having to go through the system tree. Now, um, after that, we have the lock screen. Now, when you click on that one, the system will lock and a window will appear like we can see here. So to open it, you must re-enter the password. It's basically added security for what you're currently working on and the system's information. And the final one is exit. So when you click on that one, the system will shut down or Onyx Pro will shut down. Under the buttons, we can find the um, language selection menu again, where you can choose the language preference. And under that, there's a place where the company logo should appear. It's not showing right now, but it should be there. And under that, there is a favorite screen um, or the favorite screens, which is basically a shortcut to some pre-selected screens for easier access, like we mentioned before.
In the middle of the screen, we can see the Onyx Pro logo. And top of the screen, we can see the search bar. How do we use that exactly is that we can use it to search for any screen in the system by just typing keywords or the name of the screen. Uh, then we click on that button here to show the results. So it's basically just an internal search between the screens. Um, now on the left of the screen, there is the system tree where you can go to any screen in the system. And under that one, we have a button that says show alerts. When you click on it, you will see all of the alerts that the system populated before and you can learn more about each single alert that the system populated before. Now we have the information about the copyrights and also the name of the user that is currently logged in. Alright, so now we familiarize ourselves with the interface of the program itself. Now we will dive a little bit deeper into the system's setup. We will learn more about dealing with the system setup according to a company's financial policy. Now when you click on the plus sign, double click on setup, then choose common parameters. A screen will open as we can see here. And on the screen, we can choose the variables from two classifications. First of all, the master details, and second of all, the variables. First, we click on modify, so the system will allow us to make changes or modifications. All right, um, after we click on modify, basically we will have the option to make changes. So first of all, we have the Excel path, and it's to choose the path that Onyx will use to read Excel sheets. When you click on Excel path, it will open a window on your computer to determine the Excel path as we can see from the program files, of course, in Windows file setup. So you can basically browse your computer and choose the Excel path itself. So um, let's try to search here for something that's Excel. There we go. All right, now the second thing is mobile applications path for icons and files. Uh, and files, I'm sorry. Now, this connection link was stopped and it was updated. Now, only technical support has access to this option, but unfortunately, uh, regular users will not, will not be able to make any modifications to that connection or to that option anymore. The third thing is that user not allowed to connect with more than one terminal at the same time. If we activate this variable, the system will basically not allow the same user to open a new terminal while he's already using an open terminal. So you must log out from the existing terminal that you're currently using before you can open another one. Of course, that is if we activate that option. After that, we have the connect user with one terminal. In case we activate this one, the system will link a specific user with a specific terminal as we will provide the system with this data from the user login detail screen in privilege and safety from the system management. We will get into that later on. All right, so now we have report header for each user. When we activate this variable, Onyx will automatically add header for every user screen in privilege and safety from system management, where the users can set up their own headers. Let's demonstrate that. We will open the privilege and safety screen. Now, it's not showing here, but if we go back and enable the option report header for each user, then we click on save and we will go back and refresh the tree so that the change will be effective. And after that, we will be able to see the screen report header for each user. It should come up here. And there we go. So we will have to, first of all, enable the option save and refresh tree so that we would be able to see the screen reflecting. After that, we have use audit document system. Once we activate this variable, Onyx will add document review screen in audit and posting administration system from accounting system where the auditors can basically review the documents. Then we have use individual inventory systems. By activating this variable, Onyx will allow you to use inventory system as a separate system. Use general ledger system only. 
if we need to use um, if we need to use only general ledger system as an individual system we need to activate this variable but if we would like to make general ledger system connect basically with other systems we shouldn't activate it so this option can be active or inactive by default from the initial installation it really depends on the client's preference or the activity itself use automatic current branches accounts as interface when you activate this variable onyx will automatically add a new screen called interface accounts in system inputs this screen works on recording branches interface accounts to work on it with general ledger inventory currency exchange and others next we have not allowed to give privilege on more than one branch in light system this variable is um, specifically for Onyx Lite system and its functionality uh, is to make the user work on one system like General Ledger, Inventory, or Sales. The point here, or the aim, that the user would work on one system only. Use value added taxes. So in case our work involves adding VAT, uh, when we activate this feature, it will automatically give you the following options. First of all, VAT activation date. It's used to record the date that we need to activate the VAT from. So let's say it's going to be a year from now, it's going to be a month from now, we will set the date according to our preference. VAT period type. This choice uh, or the choices in this field serve how we need the VAT period to be, whether it's going to be monthly or quarterly, which is every three months. The VAT post method. The choices in that field serve how we need the VAT posting method to be, whether it's going to be by local currency or by document currency. After, ha after that, we have the price including taxes or including sales taxes. When you activate this variable, the voucher will be released without adding taxes. So the system will include the price with taxes in one value at the end of the voucher. Then we have use tax deducted at source so in case we need to work with tax deduction from or in the source by activating this variable the system will allow you to add this type of taxes when you're dealing with taxes in the taxes screen that was a lot of the word taxes but you get the point tax code length in this field we record the number of the digits that we will use to record the added value tax number so on the right side of the screen here we will find four fields two of them collect the previous balance for accounts and stock and those are the multiple years accounts balance start from and the multiple years inventory balance starts from as for the other fields uh, one of them controls the login process this one is called stop user after failed in login and the last one determines the length of the user's password, which is the user's password minimum length. So basically, you are adding the standards for the login process, how many times uh, a user can log in before the system would log them automatically, and how long the password should be. So a minimum of, let's say, eight digits, one, whichever your preference is. So um, that's basically it for today's lecture. The next lecture, we will talk more about the variables. Um, stay tuned. Don't forget to follow us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and of course, subscribe to our YouTube channel. Have a good day and thank you for listening.